All right, so I thought I'd put together just a quick breakdown on this setup, which is a Mixamo character with some animation loaded on it that's uh, falling into a pool. Um, and this is generating a splash from the hydro field and then some bubbles when it's below the surface. So I'll stop this quick time and let's take a look at the Thinky Particle setup. So we have a character from Mixamo, which is uh, animated. We have a plane object in 3ds Max, which we're using to use with the hydro field. And then we have a box, which is sit below. Um, look at it in the front viewport. Just a box below. So when the character is inside this volume, it'll generate uh, particles, which are going to be used as bubbles. So uh, if we take a look at this inside thinking particles, the first thing I want to do is kind of point out one thing that's important when you're working with the hydro field. Hydro field is pretty simple in, in the way it works. Is with this operator, you pick an object. In this case, it's a plane that I have in the scene, and it should be a plane object. Um, once you when you, once you pick that plane, which I have in the scene, which is a simple plane uh, called water surface. So if I pick that and isolate it for a second, that's all it is. Is just a plane object with 128 segments by 128 segments so uh, this object here is now inside this hydro field operator just click add and it adds it in there okay pretty straightforward so once you do that inside thinking particles that treats that as a water surface uh, one thing to note is inside this hydro field under rigid I have the group called CH so our object to particle here is the character and I've defined that as CH for the character, object to particle. So that means when a rigid object passes through and interacts with this hydro field, this plane surface, it'll disturb it, create those ripples, splash, and so on. Now, if you have a pre-animated object like I have here, a deforming mesh like this, what you'll want to do is if you want to retain that animation, you need to put a mass value to it. And my example is this. So if I go forward and back a frame, and I play this down. Actually, before I play it down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, splash here. I'll make sure that splash is off because I want you just to see what happens with the character in the hydro field without really doing anything. The character is not going to pass through the hydro field. Matter of fact, it's going to get stuck and kind of bobble around, and you can see it actually rides almost on the surface, and then obviously it gets ejected. So that's not what we want. We don't want the object particle that we're bringing in for this character to really react to the hydro field. So in order to do that, we just assign a mass to that born particle and give it a really high mass value. So if I give this a really high mass value, and I go forward and back a frame and think of particles, then play it down this time, it's going to retain that animation from Mixamo so that it's going to uh, step off the ledge, fall into the water, and kind of go underneath the water just like we saw in the video, right? And it kind of falls down and sinks, settles here. And that's what we want. So whenever you have an object like this, uh, object particle, something you've pre-animated that you want to disturb the hydro field, uh, and you don't want the hydro field to influence it, you need to give it a really high mass value. So it just treats it as um, basically like an unyielding object, which would be awesome if it had that directly in TP, but it doesn't. So this works. Um, so the next thing would be to just turn on splash and with splash on splash is the only one that's going to a gravity group because as these splash when they have a collision from the geometry our character here they create a splash particles uh, as we see here right cool I'll stop this for a second and I'll go back to the start so that's how we get our simple splash and wake just with the hydro field and the pre-animated object with a high mass value associated to it. That gives us our splash and our wake right away. So one dynamic set, that gives us that. Uh, the only thing that's really kind of complicated here is when we want to do the bubbles that are underneath the surface. So I'm going to turn off the hydro field for a second and talk about this next rule called tracking. So we have these particles in here called dummy particles and what we need to do is we need to put particles on the surface of this object so that we can track its motion. So as a particle is stuck to this and moving around, that'll give us velocity information, position information.
Because right now, as this object is brought in as an object to particle, it's, it's basically treated as one one particle, right? So in order to read like the foot as it passes into the volume of this box when it lands below the surface of the water, right? So as par part of this, this character is below the surface, uh, we need to kind of look at the vertices that are passing below, right? And say, okay, if there's a particle here on the leg, it passes in this volume, you know, spawn some particles to create bubbles because you don't want bubbles being created up here when, you know, part of the mesh is above the water line. So, one way to do that is just put particles all over the surface. So, I have this rule called tracking. And in this rule called tracking, there's two subdynamic sets one called set ref, one called attach soft. And in set ref, what we're doing is we're taking the character and we're using a position born and a set ref operator. Uh, what we're doing is we're basically taking the particles here, which is this character, and we're placing a pistol shot of 800 particles. Um, and we're setting a relationship to the born particles to the original mesh, which is the character's mesh. So we're setting a reference between the character and then our dummy particles, which are red particles. Um, we just have a high lifespan, no speed, uh, no variation, none of that, because all we want is a pistol shot of 800 particles on the surface of this mesh. So if I turn this on right now, and I turn off the next rule, which is called Attach Soft, you'll kind of see what this is going to do. So <clears throat> we basically have a relationship between our character and the dummy particles, and you'll say, well, I don't see them because if I look way down here where the pivot point of the initial character is when it was first born is down here. Now we have 800 particles just sitting down there. Now what we want to do is we want to take those particles and then we want to attach them to that surface. Because if we don't do that, these are just being born either over time, every frame, which is not ideal, not really what we want. And then otherwise they're born on the surface and they're just born for one frame. So we need to have another rule here, which is called attach soft. And I'll open this up a little bit. And make this a little tighter so we can see it in the video. There we go. And what we're doing here is we're, we're getting that reference that we set up above. And we're using this bring to operator to bring it to a surface position. So we're using the character's, the character's shape, particle, right? And we're taking that initial reference particle and using this surface position, using the face. And the output in alignment is going to this bring to node. And the bring to node is basically going to stick it back onto this geometry. So if I go forward a frame, you'll see these particles now stick to that mesh, right? If I go forward and back a frame, play this down. So now we have particles sticking to that deforming mesh, right? So these again are dummy particles. Now one thing to point out here is I'm at uh, per half frame here and at per half frame, I zoom in, play this down, you'll see some of the particles will actually be away from the geometry on certain frames. Uh, let's see, like this, you see it's not quite stuck to the geometry. And I'm okay with that because these are just dummy particles that I'm using just to have some position information and velocity information. right? So I don't need them to be accurate. If I want them to be accurate and, and really stuck to that mesh completely, I would just need to increase my subsamples here, maybe to 96 or higher, and that would do it. But in this example, it's absolutely not necessary at all because these are particles that we're just going to use as kind of throwaway particles all they're giving us is posi posi position information uh, and velocity information from that initial mesh that was created and animated with Mixamo right so if we don't do this there's no way for us to know when this mesh gets inside this box um, because that character that group CH that's just treated as one object in thinking particles. So we need to put particles on that surface and have them stick to it. This way, we can then track these particles to do our effect. And that's what we're going to do. 
So the next thing we want to do is we want to create some bubbles. So the bubbles, I'll turn on this rule, is really straightforward. So what we have is a position born, right? And then a shape, which is a sphere. At the base level, that's all we're doing is we're taking the dummy particles and we're using a position born with a particle per second. Now, in order to affect how these particles are generated, that's where we use our thresholds, our tests, our conditions, right? So I want to, I want to say, okay, when these dummy particles that we have, these red ones, at a certain, um, let me go to our conditions here, at a certain point in time, frame 23, and your velocity is higher than 28, and you're inside this mesh, which is box 001. So if all those conditions are true, then what you're going to do is you're going to spawn me some particles per second, and you can see that already if I go to the front viewport. So now that those particles, those red particles, are in that volume, they're creating particles that are going to become bubble particles. Now these bubble particles that we're seeing right now, these have really no dynamics or anything going on. That's why they're not in a gravity group, right? Those are just giving me a set of particles that I can manipulate with the smoke solver. So once I have these particles generated, then it comes time to use the smoke solver to get the dynamics to work and behave like bubbles. So let me go back to the start here and let's open up TP. So once we have this set up, we know what frame we want them to be generated on and we can base this on velocity and then when they're in that box, that below box that we have below the, the surface of the water, we can do particles per second. Now all of this here, this can be tweaked out to whatever you want it to be. Um, right now I just have this set to 90 particles per second, but you can have it like a lot less, a lot more. You can have more points on the mesh uh, to give us more particles as well. So you can see we get a different behavior this time by doing it this way. So again, it just depends on the look, right? But ideally, this is giving us the basics for what we need. So when the object falls below that um, hydro field and then into the box, as it steps through, it's going to create particles. And we have 90, 90 particles per second. Okay, so once we have that, um, there's a rule in here for scale variation. So right now, if I look at this, play this down real quick, and we look at just the particles that are the bubbles. I'll stop this and I'll zoom in here for a second. So without the, the variation rule, you can see that these, these bubbles are basically just all kind of roughly the same size. Not a, not a lot of variation in there. So we have a rule in there just to give us some variation, so scale variation. So in here we have basically this variation setup that I use all the time. And I have this in other tutorials as well. I think this came from Haristo. And um, this basically will allow us to generate some variation. Now, the one thing I have is this gives us our, our base for variation of these bubbles. Then I have another dynamic set below that just grabs what was... So let me turn this one off and go to a frame. Let's go to a frame and turn on it on the fly. So I have a, a setup that varies the bubble size and then once I've established sort of the look of the overall bubbles, I'll stop at a frame so we can kind of see what happens here. And let me turn off... Uh, Let's turn on default and what I don't want is display selected edges. Great. So I'm going to zoom in here just so we can kind of see what happens. Okay. So the first rule is basically making a variation of bubbles here. This next rule here, if I turn this on, what this is doing is taking a percentage of those and then scaling them up larger. And that's taking a really small value and then saying we're going to create some larger bubbles here. And you can kind of see that if I turn this off, there's a couple of them that are really large in here. Um, 
See? So it allows me to basically make a nice set of variation here and then just say, okay, now I just want a percentage of the overall bubble variation to be a little larger. And that gives us a nice little uptick on like variation of these bubbles, which is really cool. So let me go back to the start here and turn back on edit on the fly and I'll turn off force the setting as well. Okay, and then let me unhide our character so we can see that. And then I have a rule in here for killing the height. So what this is, this is basically killing my bubbles if they are their Z position is inside this this range. So if they're above the waterline, I'm going to kill them off. So if anything escapes basically above the top of this box, I want to kill those off, right? And then the same thing for the splash particles. If they're below um, this waterline, go ahead and delete those. So I have a kill rule in there to just kind of help clean up any escaped particles that we might have. So that's what that rule is doing here called kill height. And like I said, gravity is only used for the splash. So that's the only thing that that is being used for. So at, at this point, the only thing that I need to do is now that this is working, I need to just turn on our smoke solver and that'll give us our bubble motion um, that we need to generate for these bubbles that are down below. Because right now all we do have in here is just basically a bunch of generated particles, no dynamics actually happening on them. So all we need to do there Take a look at that rule. So in smoke dynamics, so this is based on my black box that's set up for six foot uh, smoke and fire simulation. And in here, make this a little bit easier to see. So we have our smoke operator and then our T ranges and that's pretty much it. And then we have our smoke solver. So we're setting this right now to our bubbles. So this is going to our bubble group. And then our temperature, I'm just really small values, giving it a variation, a random seed to kill the smoke temperature. And then everything else is just basically, you know, basic parameters that you can dial in and stuff with the smoke solver. But when you use that smoke solver for these bubbles, it's going to give you a really cool dynamic motion. So you can get all that turbulence and sort of stuff that you have going on. Um, so you can see already now, I frame this up a little bit better. You can see we're getting some different behavior now with the smoke solver turned on that we had below, which is cool. So this is going to give us a nice little dynamic motion here um, with our bubble sim. Stop this for a second. Let's actually go to the camera view. That'll be much easier to see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the hydro field. And that's basically it. So if I turn on, force this setting, so our splash particles, those will be on. I turn those on on our hydro field. Yep, those are on. Our dummy particles, these will set those to none. And so our hydro field is a plane. The character deforming mesh with high value of mass passes through it, creates ripples, splash. Splash particles have gravity, which bring them back down so they don't shoot up into infinity. Our particles below have uh, spawn particles that, that get sent into the smoke solver simulation to give us these bubble motion for uh, the particles that are underwater. And then those particles also have a rule to just kind of kill stray particles that are above the water surface and the same thing for the splash particles that are below the surface to kill those off and that's basically it the key thing on this setup is making sure that your dummy particles are sticking to that mesh so that you can get some velocity information that you can get some position information so you can do something like this when the piece of geometry you know passes through that hydro field and steps into that box volume that you can have a rule that tests against uh, its position, its velocity, things like that, so that we can get these particles being born as it passes 
through the hydro field into this box volume and you can get these particles spawned. So that's basically it. So hopefully somebody finds that helpful. Thanks.